Aloha, welcome. My name is Vikram Acharya. Welcome to this latest episode of Telehealth in Hawaii. I am the co-founder of Cloudwell Health, Hawaii's first and only all virtual physician-founded telehealth organization. We got a great show for you today. We have two physicians, local physicians on the show, Dr. Cedric Strong and Dr. Yusuf Arahim. Two esteemed colleagues, glad to get the conversation started. Dr. Strong, we'll start with you. Uh, you have a superb background. You're a physician. You're an entrepreneur. You've given a lot to the community, a lot to the residents of Hawaii. Talk to me about your background, your expertise in medicine, and what, and what brought you to Hawaii. Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in, in Tennessee, and uh, I've always been quite adventurous. So I went off to uh, residency up in New England, and I, I studied there and trained at Tufts, um, and I was in New England for almost 10 years, and uh, got cut quite restless there with all the nor'easters and the, the, the blizzards that they get, and I came to Hawaii on vacation. I loved it, and I uh, wound up moving to Hilo, so I moved from a small town in New England called Portsmouth, New Hampshire, if anyone knows where that is, that's on the seacoast, and I moved to, to Hilo, and I uh, worked at Hilo Medical Center, and I really got to understand the people of Hawaii and a lot of tradition and culture there. And then from there, I kind of I migrated, and I moved uh, around a little bit, and I worked in different hospitals. So I worked at Kona Community Hospital, even Maui Memorial, and then I uh, started working on Oahu um, at uh, Polymomi Medical Center, and I've since worked at St. Francis East and West and uh, Castle Medical Center. So I've been all around the state. So I've seen a lot of um, uh, how healthcare is run here with different facilities. You know, I worked at eight hospitals in Hawaii, uh, more than that on the mainland. So uh, pretty, pretty experienced in, in uh, hospital medicine. So that's my field. Um, and so I learned that, you know, I could travel back and forth between the islands. And I kept going back to Kona and I worked in the ICUs over there and uh, Maui. And um, I really wanted to help as many people as I could. And mm -hmm. now that technology is available and this platform is developed, um, you know, we can help people in multiple places. So I, I don't have to fly around. I can be in one place and I can help a lot of people um, just through the, the virtual healthcare now. So um, Cloud Health is a, a great solution to that, um, was created for that purpose. And I'm able to give back to the community and continuing to develop uh, the platform and software and um, trying to connect uh, with communities with uh, primary care physicians, which is the, the, the latest thing that's happening now. So you can actually have a relationship with a doctor and be a primary care for multiple people in the communities and connect them um, with specialists, um, uh, which are is another shortage um, mm -hmm. in Hawaii. So primary care is a shortage, but also specialty care, you know, as far as seeing uh, specialists for various conditions, even, you know, eye exams, um, you know, cardiology, people have heart disease, uh, diabetes, um, even behavioral health. So all these sort of things um, we've tried to put together and they're at your fingertips and you can tap into Cloudwell Health and get connected to all these various fields now that we are, uh, are able to connect people and looking forward to developing things even more and bringing more things to Hawaii. So uh, Hawaii tends to get things late, uh, but once it's here, it's established, people really understand what it's about. So um, if you've never done a, a telehealth visit, you, you, it's hard to explain, but it's similar to this uh, conversation we're having on our FaceTime. And it puts you in touch with a physician and you can be on there uh, in as, you know, little as 15 minutes, definitely you can see someone the same day. And so there's no need to wait anymore. That's excellent. That's excellent. I mean, to be able to create this type of service, but to also do it for the residents of Hawaii, all the residents, that's, that's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Dr. Arahim, you have a pretty extensive background as well. You're a gastroenterologist, but you're also a chief medical officer of a large company. Talk me to a little bit about your background and what brought you to Hawaii, uh, your role as a chief medical officer, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so ve very similar to uh, uh, Dr. Strong, uh, I trained in New England. I did uh, all my training here and uh, went into a gastroenterology fellowship. 
mm-hmm. followed by interventional fellowship and moved to Hawaii around 2003 or so. And I was actually living in Hawaii continuously for uh, over 12 years. And then um, my life kind of changed a bit. So uh, moved back now to uh, New England, but I'm still in Hawaii. So I'm mostly uh, in, in New England, but I'm in Hawaii all the time. Uh, while in Hawaii, I had the opportunity to um, develop uh, a private practice and then parlayed that into uh, Honolulu's first outpatient um, freestanding ambulatory surgical center. Mm. Uh, it was one facility called Pacific Endoscopy Center in Pearl City. Uh, now we have uh, merged with three other facilities. So the, the four, three facilities on Oahu and one in Hilo. Uh, the, we have, you know, hum, humility aside, we have probably the most brilliant uh, gastroenterology specialists uh, on the island. Mm-hmm. We have about 70% uh, of, of the total volume of procedures that are being done in, 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 uh, in Hawaii. And that would not have happened without the affiliation with Covenant Physician Partners. So Covenant Physician Partners uh, is a um, uh, mainland company actually with uh, in healthcare, was actually the first healthcare, successful healthcare venture in, in Hawaii. So they partnered with us and through that partnership, we were able to kind of uh, spread our wings and expand and create, you know, the model of uh, mergers and acquisitions, which basically, you know, you get bigger, you get stronger, you negotiate better with insurance, but you also have better, you allow patients to have better access to you uh, and, and more convenience and, of course, it saves people uh, a ton of money because when you do a procedure at a freestanding facility, uh, your copay is is much less. So actually, uh, basically, it's fee for service still, but really the cost savings are, are really tremendous, uh, especially with copays to patients. Um, so as of t- 2014, I was um, invited by Covenant Physician Partners to to become their chief medical officer. It started kind of as a part time commitment, and then it basically evolved. So uh, Covenant Physician Partners uh, is now in gastroenterology. Uh, we're in ophthalmology. Pretty soon going into orthopedics and cardiovascular, we're in anatomic pathology, we're in anesthesia, uh, and we're in about, you know, 20 different states, uh, over 45 facilities, and growing uh, really very aggressively. Our private equity partner who facilitates and makes all of this possible is, uh, you know, KKR. So um, I am now basically mostly in Hawaii now than, than on the mainland, uh, you know, just trying to kind of pick up my practice again. But GI is looking great. GI care is more promising than ever. And since we've had the pandemic, obviously, there's been delayed in diagnosis and screening, not just in GI cancers, but breast cancers and lung cancers and every cancer imaginable. So at this point, we are working as, uh, you know, as, as fastidiously as we possibly could to process um, uh, and, and deal with so many uh, GI-related health issues. Mm-hmm. You know, Dr. Strong, both you and Dr. Arahim are, are physicians, but you're also equally successful in business. You've, you're building companies, you're physician leaders, how have you been able to manage that balance? Because you're both actively seeing patients all the time, and then you have to toggle over to the business side. So you're talking about medical care, and then you're talking about balance sheets. How have you been able to make that transition? That's, that's pretty impressive. It seems pretty mm-hmm. hard to do. Yeah, um, so uh, I, I've been with uh, Hawaii Pacific Health uh, for about 15 years, and then while um, with their group, I, I became the managing partner of our medical group, and I, I was in the leadership programs for the Hawaii Pacific Health. Uh, also, I went to business school during all this time while I was the chief of medicine uh, right before the pandemic. So, and and you know that was when we were developing the software for for Cloudwell Health, and um, so I was able to juggle a lot of hats. Now I'm lucky that you know I don't have any children, but I, <laughs> I. I do have a fiance who, you know, 
bless her heart, she uh, lets me do what I need to do. But I've always had a mind to, uh, to be creative. So I'm never someone that just sits around and doesn't do things. So in my, my spare time, I read a lot of books. I'm also in a lot of um, support groups. I'm in accelerated programs. Uh, I'm always reaching out, trying to work with the university as well. I've done a lot of, uh, taught some classes over there uh, with the project management. I'm gonna be participating with the marketing program um with uh, one of the, the department chiefs of marketing over there so i'm always trying to give back to the community so i really enjoy um doing that helping people um, even through this business i've been able to uh, we, we employ a lot of women uh, a lot of hawaiian as well and so we've been able to push some of our even some of our um, employees uh, or contractors through and get them into medical school and physician assistant school and so um, just putting all that together, I've, I've always tried to help the community, um, and everything I do has always been focused towards what what can I do to make this a better place. And so, I don't really look at it like work. I look at it like you know, what can I do to make Hawaii better? And how can I give back more to this beautiful place that I came to 15 years ago that changed my life? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Arahim, you're an equally busy person outside of seeing patients every day how do you do it <laughs> yes i it really uh you know kind of in some ways so I, I trained at a very uh sort of powerful academic program I, I have a phd so i actually have a background in research and so you come out of an institution like this and the expectation is that you're going to stay you know and and, mm -hmm. and do research and, and so forth and and while i published prolifically and everything else i really uh kind of wish to not live in boston <laughs> and so that's how uh kind of hawaii manifested and so i moved to hawaii and uh i was employed by a hospital which happens to be also part of uh, uh hbh um, I think within a couple of years, I uh, just uh, realized that there was something entrepreneurial in me that, that just wasn't met. You know, there was an itch to do something uh, more. And I was very fortunate to meet, uh, you know, one of my best friends and, 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 and really my brother, uh, Daryl Lee, who was a physician in IA at the time, and it still is. And so the two of us really started uh, you know, this venture. So I came out of employment and then started working and we developed the center. And then, you know, just sort of the ideas, like Dr. Strong said, I mean, the ideas just kind of kept flowing and the hunger was just unsatiated. And so, um, I mean, clearly many of us have a little bit of business in them. And, and for doctors, I think in my mind, I know 95% of doctors don't do what Dr. Strong and I do. Mm -hmm. However, to me, it's very natural because we're running the business. We're actually taking care of patients, which is the most difficult and most challenging and the riskiest commitment that anyone really has. I mean, we're on call for our patients 24 seven. We do the procedures, mm -hmm. refer, we do the marketing, we do the billing, we do all the back office sort of stuff. So, so to have a knack for business, to have an affinity toward business, to me, uh, to, 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 in my mind, to most doctors should, should really be a natural. Yeah. Um, I think also just clearly being a part of covenant and being able to sort of toggle the clinical world, the private practice world, but also the corporate world and exposure to private equity, not just at a local scale, but at a global scale. Yeah. And then basically, you know, expanding this entrepreneurship into other things, of course, along the way, you take classes and courses and executive things, and mm -hmm. and you know you you develop your analytical skills and you you become you sharpen and, and hone your skills even further. Um, so so that's really how it how it happens. Unlike Dr. Strong, I have children. I have two beagles. I have you know, and 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 I'm traveling most most weeks, like three days a week, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm able to still teach. At, at a major medical school here i'm able to still do do clinical so obviously without a support system and family at home and people who care uh, about you and love you it, it becomes very difficult but at times it's very challenging sometimes i wake up in the middle of the night i have no idea where i am you know <laughs> i don't know if i'm in nashville i'm in boston i'm in honolulu i'm in dubai it's just uh it's, it's just the way it is but it's been a very fun life and I wouldn't, would not really trade it for, for anything. Yeah. I, I give you both a lot of credit 
I mean, you're every day you're going into the hospital, you're on the front lines taking care of very sick people, especially during the COVID pandemic, you were both in there every day. And on behalf of all of us, we give you much respect for that because um, you're continuing to do it every day. And that's I think that's what validates the business of medicine, mm -hmm. Vic, because as Dr. Strong said, you know, his motivation, his primary motivation is to do something for the people of Hawaii. That's my motivation as well. Yeah. So when we, when we know how to run our business successfully and, and, and efficiently, we're, we're inviting more access, we're inviting more convenience and more quality to the patients. So, so they don't have to live in Hawaii and think that they live on an island, you know, from, yeah. from, from like a medical care perspective. Right. My thinking has always been to live locally and think globally. So yeah. you, whatever technology, whatever skill set uh, that people have on the mainland when it, when it comes to clinical medicine, at least in, 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 in my field and in Dr. Strong's field, we're doing this in Hawaii. So the whole paradigm of telemedicine, which basically disrupted the traditional paradigm of, of brick and mortar, has been an amazing hit and has allowed people, has allowed me to see people from out of state, has allowed me to see people sometimes overseas. And so really, while the convenience is tremendous, there's almost no decrement in, in terms of the quality and, and the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the sacred uh, physician-patient uh, relationship. Yeah, no, that's very true. So Dr. Strong, through Cloudwell Health, in just a couple clicks, I can see a physician who works and lives in the state of Hawaii is that, is that how it works? That seems pretty impressive. Yeah, so um, we built it for Hawaii to, mm -hmm. to service the people of Hawaii. And so uh, people in Hawaii, they want everything local. And so everyone on there is local. Uh, they could be on this island, they could be on Maui, uh, they could be on any island, but they are physicians in our community. A lot of them uh, work in the hospitals, such as myself. Some work at, you know, Polly Moment. They could be at Strop, they could be at Queens, Castle. Uh, but these are all colleagues of mine that I, I trust, and uh, I, would I would let them take care of my family members. And one thing that all the doctors in Hawaii, you know, we say, we treat everyone like family. So, mm -hmm. you know, someone that I'm taking care of, I would treat, take care of them like they're my brother, my sister, my mother, you know, cousin, what have you. So um, everybody we employ, we want them to feel that way. We want them to have that same ohana. Um, that, you know, they would basically treat everyone like a family member. Um, and that goes all the way down to the entire organization. That goes down to the coordinators that answer the phone, that help you through your patient journey. Uh, we've worked really hard on the patient journey, try, on the patient experience. Um, we really value um, the people that we take care of, and we always look for feedback. And so anyone that comes on the platform, we hope you know, they would give us feedback. Um, and those, you know, they can do that through social media on Yelp or Facebook. Um, but we really look at those uh, pieces of information that they share with us. And we really try to take that back and try to perfect things even, even better. So we're always working on the platform, trying to evolve things, uh, trying to bring even artificial intelligence into the, uh, you know, into the health, health workplace now. You know, we even envision one day being on the metaverse, having you know, cloudable health on the metaverse where you can mm -hmm. go on virtual reality, log in and, and, and see one of us uh, there, you know, almost like in person. So, um, yeah. you know, we, we look to do these sort of things. Uh, we look to create things, we look to innovate. Um, and so we're always there. So, um, like you said, three clicks away and you can be on the phone uh, virtually with us within 15 minutes uh, or you can go on and create a calendar and, and go on there whenever you want. But yeah, we're accessible for the community anytime. That's really impressive. Just a great service to the community. Dr. Arahim, this month is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. And as you mentioned before, a lot of people have put off going to the doctor, getting tests uh, for very important things because of the havoc from COVID-19. Can you walk us through colorectal cancer, what it is, what steps we can take to try and prevent it with your experience as a gastroenterologist? Sure. Um, 
So colon cancer is, is the third most common cancer in the world. Uh, and the colon is the part of the intestine that's called the large intestine. Um, it, it's also the second uh, most deadliest cancer when you look at uh, you know, the overall scheme of uh, cancer mortality. So it, it's a very common cancer. Uh, sadly, uh, there's about 150,000 uh, cases diagnosed on an annual basis. Uh, and even sadder than that, about a third of people diagnosed are usually like late stage. So they, they, they succumb to colon cancer. What is um, preventable about colon cancer is that 90% of the time, if the, if the cancer is detected early, your survival is, is almost you know, back to normal. It normalizes to someone who's never had cancer. The, uh, the, the goal of, of screening uh, for cancer and prevention is basically to catch it early, but actually to catch even an earlier stage of cancer. So there's something called Apollo, which is a little growth that almost looks like a mold and develops in the colon. So when you have a screening procedure, usually the gold standard would be doing a colonoscopy. We're going in to look for these polyps. And what a polyp is, it's a, it's a, it's a small precancerous lesion where all colon cancers generally evolve from those polyps. So it starts small and it gets large, and at some point it gets large enough to become a cancer. So when one has a colonoscopy, these polyps are found. And, you know, the average person has about one in 25 chance of, 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 of getting colon cancer, 5% chance of having a polyp at any time. So when we see the polyp, we remove it. And the entire procedure takes about half an hour. Mm. It's very comfortable. It's very dignified. There's sedation involved. There's not any uh, pain uh, or maybe slight discomfort. But nowadays with our anesthesia, um, the, the depth of anesthesia, that, that, that is no longer the problem. So um, this is something that uh, we urge everybody in the world to get colon cancer screening because that is preventable, almost 100%, just like uh, breast cancer is preventable. There are other cancers in your body that you cannot prevent. Brain cancer, you cannot prevent. Lung cancer, you cannot prevent. Pancreatic cancer, you cannot prevent. And as a result of that, once they're detected, it's already too late because people already have symptoms. So the idea is to find it before it actually becomes uh, symptomatic. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, especially in Hawaii, we have a higher prevalence of colon cancer than, than uh, our counterparts on the mainland. Uh, something that has to do with genetics, something that has to do with um, some sort of historical uh, influx of, of different people and races into Hawaii and, and perhaps, ex, you know, exposures to the pollutants and things, things of that nature. So especially in Hawaii, we should be more vigilant uh, about screening and, and about preventing uh, colon cancer. Mm. Wow, that's some interesting statistics. Dr. Strong, if hypothetically I were to see you uh, as, as, as my doctor on Cloudwell Health and I need to see Dr. Arahi because you're concerned that I may have colon cancer. What would be the steps from a telehealth standpoint to connect me to Dr. Arahi so I can see? Okay. Yeah, so ideally you would uh, come through the platform, you register as a patient, uh, and our coordinators would secure the visit. Uh, and, uh, you know, we would have a dialogue uh, just like we're having right now. Uh, I would ask you some questions to see if you're having any symptoms. Um, obviously, we, we follow standards in healthcare, um, so we would we would uh, go through a very thorough uh, history taking. Um, we would likely um, arrange some some basic diagnostic lab testing, and if you do meet criteria, uh, we would connect you through to Dr. Arahim's office. Um, everything's electronically transferred through our system to their system. Um, and so uh, this would be a collaborative effort. We work as a team. Uh, we get you over to see Dr. Arahim either virtually or in person. If he determined that you need a procedure, uh, Dr. Arahim would arrange all that from his end. But it's a very seamless process, very easy to do. 
uh, with the networks that we have with Dr. Arahim and his team. Uh, they're always very gracious to take care of our patients. We've sent them patients many times. He's done excellent work for us. We've always gotten great feedback. We can we want to continue that relationship and we can build on that. It's great that Cloudwell can take the lead in connecting patients to specialists like Dr. Arahim because it, it can often be very difficult to, to mm -hmm. access if you, if you don't have the, it. And the best thing is they are on uh, virtually every island. So it's a network mm -hmm. that, that they built out on their end that actually complements the networks that we have on our end and our software. That's, that's excellent. Dr. Arahim, are there steps we can take from a lifestyle standpoint to try and reduce the likelihood of, of something as serious as colon cancer? Absolutely. So what I neglected to mention before was colon cancer becomes common after 45. So, so now we have reduced screening age from 50 to 45. Now, if you're someone who has symptoms already, like you have bleeding or your bowel habits are just altered, or there's just something not right, you can, be, you can get a colonoscopy, for instance, at any age, because that's called diagnostic. But from a screening perspective, we start uh, at that age at 45. If you have a family history, we start even sooner than that. So, so these are all factors. So what you can do, obviously, you can't change your genetics. If you have family history, then you, know, you basically have to subject yourself to more rigorous screening uh, or surveillance to prevent cancer. But um, uh, colon cancer is associated with obesity. Uh, it, it's, it's associated with um, a, sort of like a, a, an excessive uh, carnivore diet. Uh, less likely to have it if you're on a Mediterranean diet, Mediterranean diet. So keeping a basically a, a body weight that's uh, closer to normal as possible, uh, consuming uh, basically leafy green vegetables and 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 some data to suggest fiber obviously is very good. Potentially vitamin C is preventable. Potentially people who take aspirin might see uh, sort of a decrease in, uh, in, in colon cancer, less alcohol consumption, and then less smoking, of course. So, so these are all kind of the, the common sense things, but, but sadly we're seeing a spike in colon cancer and, and the age is really shifting more to, 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 to the right, to the younger age group. So, so mm. people in their thirties are now at a much higher, millennials are actually a more higher risk uh, for colon cancer than, than people like over 60 and over, just, just sort of the acceleration of, of the, uh, the, the prevalence is, is really quite interesting. And we attribute it mostly to lifestyle and uh, sedentary lifestyle and sort of obesity and so forth. That's some interesting statistics. It sounds like, especially now, a lot of people need to get themselves checked by a physician, screened for colo colorectal cancer, and take the appropriate steps to try and achieve a better lifestyle. And um, you know, on behalf of Think Tech Hawaii, I want to thank Dr. Strong and Dr. Arahim. Now, these are two accomplished physicians committed to the community, committed to the state of Hawaii, who have built very successful enterprises. And um, I thank you both. Thank you for taking the time. Mahalo. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.